it's time to flow with the SEO queen. Receive the perfect leads like never before. No traffic's gonna explode. It's time to grow. Welcome to the SEO Queen Tech Show, a podcast to help you get more credibility, visibility, and profitability through inspiration, technology, and marketing insight. This podcast is for professionals and entrepreneurs who are looking to get more customers, clients, and patients. We are broadcast worldwide on Bashani Radio, iHeartRadio, and iTunes. Bashani Radio, always talking about everything from New York City. You can listen to the SEO Queen Tech Show on any mobile phone or tablet device. Also, as a thank you gift for listening to the SEO Queen Tech Show, you can go to seoqueen.com and book a complimentary strategy session. Just go to seoqueen.com and book a Reach More Clients Power session. So, today's guest is a holistic practitioner. He was born and raised in Los Angeles, and he has been in the community Um, as a businessman and advocate for a long time. I know him from uh, being involved in the community, specifically in the Merck Park and and Los Angeles as a whole. He is a fifth generation herbalist falling in line with his great uncle, Dr. Alonzo Kennebrew, physician and herbalist to none other than Dr. Booker T. Washington of Tuskegee University. So Eskia's clients range from those in grassroots community to the entertainment world. He has lectured on health and wellness for companies such as Xerox, U.S. Job Corp., uh, the L.A. Unified School District, uh, the University of Southern California, the City of Inglewood, the Center of Lupus Care, and more. So I want to also share that he's been a featured guest on several television and radio programs, both locally and nationally. So... Without further ado, I want to introduce holistic practitioner, businessman, and counselor, none other than As- Askia Muakil. How are you today? I'm doing fine. Thank you for inviting me. Great. I'm so glad to have you on the show. So, wow, what a legacy to descend from the personal herbalist and physician of Dr. Booker T. Washington. That's amazing. So, besides just um, your family legacy, what drew you to um, holistic living and, and being becoming an herbalist? I think uh, just basically, you know, with the family being, it's been the family for so many years, and then a very concern about people, because I teach African history too. And it's okay. been a very concern about the conditions of our people. So, you know, growing up with the background, and holistic medicine always being around me, and just the concern from a black man about our people and the condition of health. I always say, 150 years ago, our people were the most physically fit people on the planet. 150 years later, we're the sickest people on the planet. What happened? So it's a, it's a, it, it, so that it draws me from from both areas of looking at us and trying to assist as much as I can, and, and whatever capacity I can. Okay. So that's awesome. So what do you think are the reasons why um, health and wellness is such a challenge for the the black community? Because, you know, historically of how we looked at health, like, for instance, if I go down south, I could have a pocket full of money and I could be very thin and somebody will walk up to me and an old auntie will walk up to me and say, boy, you got a pocket full of money, but you're thin. Why are you so poor? Poverty was a sign. Being small or being uh, thin in weight was a, was a sign of poverty down south. Being overweight was a sign of health. You see? Because you want to be big to be able to pick cotton and pick, pick whatever product they had you pick. So a, a sign of wealth w- was being overweight, and we still hold on to that tradition even to the day. Oh, wow. So let me make sure I'm understanding you right. So it used to be like a status symbol to be overweight Yes. in our community? Yes, it was. 
Oh, wow. Like, like I just mentioned, you go down South Sea, oh, auntie, they say, why are you so poor? Why was being thin a, a, a considered poverty back then? Because if you was overweight down South, you were, it means that you could eat. When you were, when you had people that were thin, and they were poor. So being overweight was just a traditional thing of being prosperous. Mm -hmm. Like a man rub his stomach and say, look, this is a girl's playground. This is your playground. All this kind of stuff. Being overweight meant that for a woman to get a man that was overweight means that he could take care of. Her. So we bring all these subconscious things that were brought up in the beginning of looking at how we eat. We don't eat. We don't eat to get nutrition. We eat to get full. You know, we were all taught eat every eat everything on your plate. Maybe I was full 15, 20 minutes ago. No, eat all your food on your plate. So we eat food with no nutrition, and that's why we pick up weight. The food that mm. we eat don't have no nutrition. It has it's food. They should have a law that McDonald's, Jack in the Box, or fast food cannot call itself food. It's stuff. It's fast stuff. Because if it was food, if if it was food. If it was food, it, it would it would nourish you. You wouldn't be hungry every two hours. So the whole right. thing about eating, we have to eat to get nutrition, not get full. So when you say eat to get nutrition, what does that look like? Well, the body craves for certain type of nutrition. Zinc, potassium, B1, B12, amino acids. Body don't crave for grits, Kentucky Fried Chicken, burritos, tacos. So the foods that we eat, have no not enough nutrition to sustain the body. When I see somebody's 300 pounds overweight, I say, oh, you're starving. They say, how am I starving when I'm 300 pounds overweight? Because you're eating the wrong thing. If you were eating right, you wouldn't be 300 pounds. You see? Wow. So the, body wow. wants, the body wants minerals. The body don't want stuff. We just put a whole lot of stuff in our body. You know, so if, you ate, if you ate junk food, you ate fast food for a month, Three times a day, you would be dead at the end of the month because they didn't give you the nutrition that you need. Wow, that's powerful. So, besides just like eating your greens, your vegetables, and your fruit, I mean, is is a plant based diet the 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 best way to go? Best way to go. And you so. Know, yeah, a, a, you know, plant-based diet is very good for, you know, for your nutrition. But when you talk about it, now we're talking about nutrition that feeds the body. One thing that we have to work on, too, along on eating right for, for optimum health is not just eating, but learning how to think right. We think wrong. What I mean by that? Some people are still mad at their brother and sister because they took a cookie when they were six, and they 66 and still <laughs> mad. How in the hell can you hold on to pain that long? We hold on to pain. We just mad about everything. Correct everybody else. You know, a lot of times our ego gets in the way. Ego is like living in a house with no mirrors. You see everything but yourself. You don't never want to look at you as might be part of the problem, that you got to change anything. So besides eating healthy, we have to learn how to think healthy. We think the wrong way. And a lot of times weight gain only means that you're preoccupied with everything but yourself, if you were if you were paying attention to yourself, then you wouldn't be overweight. Mm. Wow, that's 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 powerful. So when you, when you say people are paying attention to everything but themselves, what what does that look like? It means that everything becomes before themselves. Everything, everything, everybody is everybody is. is it is it, it, it's wrong and they're right. Mm. It's, it's, it's like we, we we don't even have enough patience with each other to say that that your perception of reality is yours. Mine is mine. But we want people to think just like us. I'm going to tell you a, 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 something a 92-year-old man told me. He told me one time there was a turtle and a fish and the turtle went back into the water and the fish said, Mr. Turtle, where you been? He said, I've been on land. The fish said, you lying. What the hell is land? The turtle said, well, 
on land you have insects, you have people, you have mountains, you have trees, and you have desert on land. And the turtle said, you lying. And then the turtle said, the fish said, you lying. And the turtle said, and it's dry too. The fish said, I know you lying. What the hell is dry? The turtle said, let's talk about something else. You can't talk to a fish about something dry. <laughs> yeah, a fish has no concept of dry. And if they did know what dry was, they couldn't live to tell the story about it. Yeah. So we have to learn that, you know, whatever makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Whatever makes you happy, that's the best thing for you. So you telling me that we as, as people were walking around with a lot of fish, turtles, and, and birds? Well, no, because everybody got to believe the way we, we believe. I right. tell people like this, especially when it comes to religion. Mm -hmm. I say, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, stop you from breaking in my house. Praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. If hum do Allah, Allah Akbar, stop you from robbing me, Allah Akbar. A Bani Ghani, Shalom, whatever medication you need to keep you sane, take your medication. But when you try to give me your medication, you a dope dealer. Stop being a dope dealer to people. It works for you. It don't work for me. Okay. So getting on, getting back to just, you know, herbs and eating for nutrition, like what are some strategies that busy entrepreneurs can use to, um, you know, eat better and get the proper nutrition well it, it, it's like let's say start off your morning i always remember the word breakfast means break fast you don't eat a the break of fast you don't have a lot of food lunchtime should be your biggest day and nighttime should be a a, a smaller meal you see so it, like i said the body wants basically minerals Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. minerals in the body the body is it, and a lot of simple things that we have got away from we do a lot of things that are unnatural for instance for instance see before people used to wake up at six o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. when the, and, the, and the flowers open up their petals and then mm -hmm. the petals close at six o'clock that evening so mm -hmm. flowers close their petals because of the invention of electricity we stay up to 12, 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, and our bodies don't get enough sleep. We don't get enough rest. So what we do, and we, we, we watch Star Trek at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, maybe watch enough, and go to bed for four or five hours. Your body didn't have time to regenerate itself. Other simple things that you can help with your health. Sometimes just learn to go places at like parks. Go have lunch in a park. Find one with a lake in it. Have a good time. Just learn to just be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, we wake up. I always remember this. Six billion sperms headed for one egg and we the only one made it. A hundred billion planets in the Milky Way galaxy. And two trillion galaxies in the universe. And we're here. So the goal in life is trying to find yourself. And when you find yourself, you're born again. That's how you're born again. You find what you're here for. Work on you. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, we, I, is, is very important. Yeah, we, we work on... See, we're always trying to improve other people. But you're all disastrous. Hmm. You see? I was talking about... A, a brother, brother was telling me about me. Some things I need to work on. Okay, I can accept it. But then they want to keep on telling me when I already said I accept it. That's fine. So I had to re, re introduce to them, you curse too much. And they had the justification why they curse. See, I mean, people have reasons. They don't never want to look at themselves that they can make changes inside themselves. Right, right, right. And, and, that, and that, that allows you never to grow. Mm -hmm. You see, you have to be able to accept. Uh, Sometimes I call some of my closest friends and say, what, what is it that you think I could change and make me a better person? Mm. I really want to hear because I know the people are going to tell me the truth because they're my real friend. Right. See, a lot of times we don't know the difference between friendly and friendship. Friendship and friendly are two different things. And a friend be able to tell you the truth no matter what, if it hurts you or not. You know, you just want right. to know the truth. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you're looking at with somebody that's friendly, you know, it's like you meet somebody that got brand new friends every two years. You better watch out for that person because you can, they can't you can't hold on to people for two or three years. What happened to Jack? Oh man, that Jack he just he just no no good no good. And then what happened to Susan? Oh, she ain't about nothing. Every two years you got a new set of friends. What's huh. wrong with you? But it ain't never you, huh? <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, that is unbelievable. I mean, I I can honestly say I have friends from all the way from elementary school. So still to this day. Oh yeah, see that's a blessing. But see, what's that saying? Something about your character, who you are. Right. Because right. changes have happened in your life and their life, but whatever the core of the person is still there. That's right. just a, a great quality to have. But when somebody got brand new friends. You know, every two years, like people in a relationship, they can't be in a relationship for two years. Everything <laughs> I knew, Brandon. What happened? Oh always man, a brand new boyfriend or girlfriend? Yeah, I always got awkward. somebody. <laughs> something is wrong. You act like it's a car or something. Every two years, right? Car. It's like you traded in for a different yeah. model. <laughs> yeah, it was never you though. It was me. I was perfect. I was the best person. And if they right. were just like me, everything would be okay. You see. So- I know you're an herbalist and I know you're a businessman, but you said something that um, I wanted to ask you again about is forgiveness. I've interviewed people about the concept of forgiveness. Can you break that down from an epigenetic standpoint? You know, it's going back to the turtle and the fish. You know, it's just that, you know, I've I've been in, we just like we are we are very this ego thing and it's very new to human beings we always think that we're right can you just admit that you could be wrong maybe it's off balance maybe i just have a different perception of reality it don't mean that your perception of reality is wrong or right it means it's different than mine can we ever go for medium ground but we always want our ego tells us that we're right all the time I told you the ego is like living in a house with no mirrors. You see everything but yourself. Right. You don't want to look at you don't want to look at yourself because it doesn't scare you to, to to make a change in your own life. Forgiveness is like it happened. It ain't it, it's done. Why are you living in the past? Like I say, some people mad forty years later on something that happened when five years old. Remember when I was in school? Remember when I was in the second grade and you threw that rock at me? You remember when I was in second grade and you drunk my milk? Oh, I can't stand you. I remember one time I had to catch myself. I had a, I went to school, and there was a girl that was in school that I didn't like in elementary school. Really didn't like. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh huh. Yolanda. Her name is Yolanda. I'll tell you her name. I ain't gonna tell you her last name. But she and I saw her walking through the mall one day. Mm-hmm. And this, I'm in, I'm in my forties, and I. I haven't seen her in years, but I ain't going to go speak to her because I didn't like her in elementary school. Then I had to come home one day and think about it. how stupid can I be? I'm still, I'm this second and third grade. I'm 40 years old and I'm going to judge her personality based on what happened when we were two years old, three years old. We didn't even have a driver's license. We didn't even have a car. We didn't have nothing, but I'm, I'm upset. So your your saw, brain wasn't fully mature either. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, and I had to catch it's myself. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's like people in relationships; they blame the other person for all happening in the relationship. They've been together 15, 20 years, and they say the other person ain't you know that no good person. But you forget one thing: you was there. What was wrong with you that you stayed for twenty years <laughs> to talk about somebody else? But you was there. Right, right. You know, but so you're going to blame them. Oh, I'm ha- unhappy because of the fact that you weren't willing to leave and become happy. So you right. suffered yourself. What kind of uh, sacrilegious person are you that you was put yourself in that situation for that long p- bit of time? So a lot of times we know in a, in a very short time the relationship ain't working because you ain't going to change nobody. That's who they are. You know, you are who you are. Right. And think that you have the power to change it. See, you, you, we get to we get this God concept that, that all of a sudden I got enough intelligence 
enough knowledge that it, I could change them to what I want them to be. You are crazy as hell. Right. Yeah. These are these are the problems that we have. That's why I say, but see, all these things lead to the other part of the body. Health problems. Right. High blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. Yeah, uh, uh, all these kind of things lead to the, the health problem because disease only means dis-ease. I'm diseased. I'm not happy. So then all of a sudden the body takes that dis-ease and becomes disease. Mm. We just have to learn to work on us. Like I say, six billion sperm to it for one egg, and you're the only one made. You're the only one here. <laughs> That's so, a you break it down that way. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we're here for a reason. Find your purpose. Some people, you know, I, you know, just and, and it could be just as easy as saying hello, good morning, being nice to everybody, being nice to the cats and the dogs in your neighborhood. My my girl, she 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 goes to the store and buy cat food. For stray cats in the backyard, you know, oh. <laughs> you got bird food, bird food, you know. And I said, it's and it's a whole different world. I've been living in the house for thirty five years, and I never noticed that it was so much life in my backyard. Oh wow! But so much life, we just have to learn to see it, look for it, expect look for it, and be and, and just accept it for what it is. You know, mm -hmm. see, this is what it's like us having children. We always think that we're going to bring intelligence to the children or, you know, the children. But children are your teachers, too. Right. It's they, true. They, they bring you uncompassionate love, unconditional love. Yeah. So learn from your teacher. A lot of times people get old because they forget about being young. Mm. Mm. Just learn that youth was bringing you certain. You could get a child just come from the spiritual realm into this world and into this world. That's why children that are raised with their grandparents have a little bit of uh, 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 exception to them because they learn one grand, the grandparent ready to go back. You just came. Right, right. And so right. both of them learn from each other. They learn very well. So we just have to learn at with people and life and enjoy this life. Just learn to be happy. Right, right. Learn to be happy. That's powerful. I mean, you know, if you're eating plant based and you're letting stuff go, forgiving and and working on yourself, you you'll be successful. It's like this: you could be a vegetarian and you uh, you be a very vegetarian and deal with a lot of negativity. You just as bad a shape as a 500 pound happy person. Mm -hmm. You just the other side of it. You see, right, right. You, you, you know, this, I I can't stand when vegetarians want to come because I'm an herbalist. They, and I go to an event and they want to look at my plate, see what I'm eating. I'm eating what I want to eat. I might want a piece of chicken today. Maybe. I just want to because I'm grown. So why are you, now you're going to judge me on who I am by what I eat, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm grown. So, so where about you? So I have a question for you. What's that? What? herbs are good for reducing stress what herbs are good for reducing stress alfalfa is very good uh uh it depends on the, the degree of the stress right you know so i have another question for you what is a good herb for uh mental clarity increasing your mental clarity and productivity if you want, if you want to relax, relax your body it's, it's, a, it's a number of herbs i give you a couple one thing is good for, you know, like say sleep, releasing stress in the body, valerian. Valerian? Yeah. It's There's an herb for... called valerian. Uh huh. Very I good. I know food. that. Yeah. You want to build, you want to build a body, alfalfa, bee pollen, burdock, uh, 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 kelp. You know, like, and see, one thing people come to me is like, they hear about one herb and they say, well, that herb, Okay, it's good. It ain't everything. Now I've been a herbalist for like thirty-five years. I remember a friend when, uh, uh, wanted me to re meet their girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So I go meet her and stuff. And I said, she she would belong to one of these uh, multi-level uh, herb companies or something like that, you know. Uh -huh. And she gonna tell me. So so I'm telling. Her, she's telling me. I said, 
and, and and she told me the name of the one that she was dealing with, and she said they the herb, this herb, noni juice or something. It's good oh, for everything. Man. I said, ain't nothing good for everything. Right. <laughs> ain't no <laughs> herb. About it. But you were here. Now you find everybody talking about, well, if you if you take a sea moss, sea moss is like everything. Sea moss is good, but it ain't everything. Right, right, right. You, you it, Herbs are like this. You got bitter herbs. You got other uh, categories of herbs. Bitter herbs are very good for cleaning the body. Cleaning the body, boot you, buckthorn, center, casa grata, rhubarb, mandrake, nutmeg, alone. Those are very good for cleaning the body. Okay. But they're not builders. They're not going to build your body. They're going to make you go to the bathroom. And right. some people think their body clean because I, I went to the bathroom and I'm clean. No, you ain't. You go to the bathroom twice a day and still be constipated. How did you have a stomach? You, you seen people go to the bathroom twice a day? And have and, and still have a stomach. How was that? They went to the bathroom twice a day. Why? Because they got on the assembly line. Something fell out, <laughs> but it's still coming more coming in. You see? So, and I tell people, find an herbalist, a good herbalist. I'm a great herbalist. Call me. But just so find I, somebody that knows about health. Huh? So when you when you hire and retain an herbalist, like, you know, first of all, how can they connect with you and what should a good herbalist be able to do for an entrepreneur who wants to improve their health? I think, first of all, he should uh, uh, evaluate them, you know, look into the eyes, do your ideology to them, uh, see what's going on, ask some questions. Mm -hmm. See, because a, a lot of things that people could do with their health, simple things. Let me tell you one thing that you could do to help bring out inflammation in your body. Which is one of the biggest killers in your in your body? What's that? Walk walk around the house, walk around the yard with no shoes on. Why? Because human beings are the only thing on Earth that have insulation between them and the Earth. Ain't no birds, no dogs, no cats got shoes on. <laughs> We're the only one that make insulation between us. But if you if you ground yourself to the Earth with no shoes on, that helps bring out inflammation inside your body. Just walking around with no shoes on. Something very simple. But we, you know, we, we, we used to do this when we were kids, but we grew up, we got to put shoes on everything. Come on, take your shoes off, go to the park, go to the beach, whatever you got to do, just walk around and be happy. It'll help bring out inflammation. But inflammation, like I said before, is one of the biggest killers that human beings go through. So grounding is a great way to reduce and eliminate inflammation. Yes, it is. Oh, that's awesome. So what's another strategy? Another strategy? Like mm -hmm. I said, the other strategy is like the inflammation. Get smaller plates. One thing we do, we got plates are too big. Mm. You, I mean, I, I got salsa sized plates when I eat. Because that's all the body wants. But we, like I said, we're trained to eat everything. Just go, right. oh, I, we, see, we, <laughs> see, we, we said the food was good when we, oh, I can't eat another drop. <laughs> you, you, you were full 20 minutes ago. Right. But, oh, right, but, right. You, but you were conditioned to eat all the food on your plate. Right. Everything. Mm, mm, you know? mm. Wait, and all you need to do at home is just get a smaller plate of food. A little smaller plate. Just eat a little plate. You'd be full. Okay. You, you, you ever go to a, a French restaurant? They always got little plates of food. They right. charge your arm or leg for the food. <laughs> it's a small, it's a small plate of food. Nobody eats all this, you know, food on top. You know, you, you, people, we're so caught up in the eating. We'll go to a buffet and overload the plate. It's a buffet. You can come right back when you get finished eating. <laughs> But you wanna? I'm you gonna take off the plate. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I got this big old plate of food. You know, <laughs> you you can go right back I and get lunch. Like Golden Corral. I don't. Eat, I don't like. Uh -uh. It's too much food. It's too much. Yeah, and then you have people go to Golden Corral and places like that, and they get there for the breakfast and or wait for the lunch because they know dinner coming right around. They get there about six o'clock, but they can have both lunch and dinner. Come on. You don't eat that much food. Why do you want to eat like that? Oh, I can't eat another drop. Oh, I'm completely full. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. You know, you wonder what's wrong with your system. Why we're in the hospital. Why we have all kinds of issues. Because we just 
overload ourselves. Right. I, I'm, I'm 65 years old. I wear about 190 at a good time. A little bit. They said that they could be overweight, but it's a good weight. I wear 34 in the waist. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. I mean, some people might say, well, you're supposed to weigh 170. No, I don't want to be that. This 190. 185 would even be better. So you just have to, and then you have to look at your body structure. Certain people have to have certain weight for certain body structure. If you got big bones, you should be one weight. If you medium bone, you should be another weight. Because a lot of times we, a lot of the medication that we take are made for other people's anatomy, not our own. Right. So how can people connect with you if they want to get a they consultation? Can call, they can call me anytime, but don't call me at midnight. Okay? They call me Askia Muakil. Askia, A-S-K-I-A. Muakil, M-U-W-W-A-K-K-I-L. And they can call me at 323-757-1241. Let me repeat that again. 323-757-1241. And I ship from all around the world. Okay. In fact, you could help me out. Give them my email. Um, Your email is... Askia FM at gmail.com. That's A S K I A F M at gmail.com. And my website. What's my website? Your website is A S K I A life.com. Askia life.com. Thank you. We both gave it to you. Two of us gave it to you now. And all right. you gotta do is follow about learn to lose that, learn to let that weight go. You know, it's so much better when you. When you when you can walk around with all all that stuff, and it's like, you know, I had a friend. She was so big. She went to the beach. My friend's wife went so big. She went to the to the ocean and jumped in the water and got harpooned. Just too big, four hundred pounds. You know? Woo! Oh yes, I've had people four. I've had people four hundred pounds. We get them down. I had one lady. She was three thirty. I got her down to one ninety five. Still got to go a little bit more. Another, wow. another 25 pounds, she'd be, she'd be ready. And all you do is extend your life. You know, there's one thing about old people. Old people are usually skinny. Get a, skinny and got a good sense of humor. You got to learn how to laugh. <laughs> laugh, at, laugh at some things. I got an old man. He tell me old, all kind of bad jokes. So I can't tell him on, 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 on the line. But he tell me, I'm going to just learn how to laugh. Learn to be happy. Right. Right, right. Just Awesome. Say hi to everybody. Right. See, and, and don't be judgmental of other people. I always remember you can learn from two people. Who can you learn from? A wise person or a fool? If you're smart, you can learn from both of them. A wise person can teach you wisdom. A fool can teach you how not to be foolish. Exactly. Exactly. So, so don't judge them. Just mm -hmm. get what you can from right. them and be happy. Wish them the best. Pass by. You know, sometimes just get off the when, later on the day of this weekend, call your, your cousin or your, your brother or somebody that you've been mad at in 10, 15 years and say, I'm sorry. You know, and just make the peace. And if you ever want to get a negative friend out of your life, this is how you do it. Listen to me now real well. How you get a negative person out that's always negative to you? When they call you and they ask you how you doing, say, I'm doing fine. I'm doing greater today than I was yesterday. And I'm going to do greater tomorrow than I am today. After about a week of positive affirmations to them, they won't call you no more. <laughs> and on that note, I want to thank you, Askia Muakil, for coming on to the SEO Queen Tech Show. This is a podcast for uh, to for professionals and entrepreneurs who are looking to get more customers, clients, and patients. This podcast is, uh, helps you to get more credibility, visibility, and profitability through inspiration, technology, marketing insight, and on today, some great wisdom, some awesome nuggets. Make sure you favorite this episode in the Bashani Radio app. And if you're listening to this on another platform, make sure you download the Bashani Radio app and follow the SEO Queen Tech Show. And also, I want to give a shout out to feedspot.com, 
for uh, rating my podcast, the number one SEO podcast on their website. So thank you so much for that honor. And again, you can listen to the SEO Queen Tech Show on any mobile phone or tablet device. And please, please, please don't forget, we have the Reach More Clients Power Conference happening on July 23rd at the beautiful uh, city of Long Beach at the Hilton on Ocean Boulevard, right by the entrance of the 710. Uh, You can just go to seoqueen.com slash conference for more details. Well, again, my name is Z Scott, and I am your host of the SEO Queen Tech Show. And my guest today has been Askia Muakil. And And thank thank you so much for listening. And thank you for inviting me. And one thing I want to say to you, the business people out there, never judge who has money and who doesn't. Biggest mistake. You never know who got the money. Okay. Just talk to everybody. Have a beautiful day. And I enjoyed everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. And until next time. Bye-bye. It's time to grow. Get the SEO queen. Get visibility. 